Hey everybody, this is uh, Dan from Roder and Schwartz and uh, I'd like to walk you through really the uh, IMF wizard and um, how to set it up so that you can get media successfully over into a format that Netflix uh, are going to want to work with. So to start with, let's just open up uh, a folder I've got on the uh, internal RAID on the clips I'm using here. And you can see I've set up a folder which has got some uh, red and green inserts. Uh, as well as some uh, source material which consists of um, some DPX frames and also uh, some audio files. So I'm just going to import those into the Clipster and we'll start positioning this onto the timeline to create our project. So the first thing we're going to notice is currently the, the Clipster is set to um, 1920 by 1080 resolution and we can clearly see that these are UHD resolution. What I'd like to do is quickly change the timeline to make sure that we're working in the correct format so there's no confusion on the output. There we go. One of the cool things about the Clipster is when we start working with multiple clips of audio and video, we can actually use some of the, uh, the tools that it has to position this media onto the timeline and save ourselves some time. For example here, if I select the drag and drop alignment to vertical, I can bring all four of those audio tracks onto the timeline in a single operation. Let me just spend a moment to uh, rearrange the desktop slightly and add some icons and uh, also we'll bring up a, a scope just so we've got a clearer idea of what's going on. So I'm happy with the video and uh, audio tracks that I've set up on the timeline. What I need to do next is run the IMF delivery tool. This can be done by Control shift d on the keyboard, or in this case I've just gone into the project window, and now I can start walking through the IMF delivery tool wizard. At this point, as we're starting from scratch, I just need to generate an IMP. That's an interoperable mastering package. Uh, and of course there's no encryption in the IMF format at the moment. So I can move on to the next setting, which is which application layer do I want to work with. Now this is pretty simple because application level two, as it says here in the wizard, is basically for HD resolution. Anything above that, such as UHD, is going to be application layer two extended. Now today, as I'm working with UHD material, this is the option that I'm going to select. In the video section of the IMF delivery tool, you can see we have a number of things to configure. In this case, it's a UHD package running at 2398. The next thing to configure is if the package is going to be YUV or RGB, and then if it's going to be head or full range. In this case, I'm going to generate a 2398 UHD resolution package in full range 10 bit RGB. The audio section of the IMF delivery tool allows us to name and configure any of the audio track layout parameters. The cool thing is here, as well as the 5.1 surround sound mix that I have, I've also got a stereo mix on track 7 and 8. The GUI allows me to define as many different tracks as I'd like, and all of these will be rendered out in a single pass. Once I've finished configuring all the audio parameters, I can then configure the compression that I'd like to use. In this case, Broadcast Profile Level 5, which as the GUI shows us here, is 800 megabits per second. The CPL, or Composition Playlist section of the IMF Delivery Tool, is where we can define things like content title, where the content came from, 
what sort of material the system is, the issuer, etc. You can also go further by adding locale data such as uh, languages, regions, and even uh, agency ratings for the material that you're working with. The last section of the IMF delivery tool is really about defining the path and the file name that you'd like to call the package that you're working with. Once all this has been defined, if you're likely to need this format again, you can go in and define a preset. So in this case, we can call it Netflix RGB UHD 10 bit full. And then if we need to render out any more projects in the future, we can just select this from the pull down list. Now it's just a case of hitting the create button and sitting back while Eclipse renders the media into an IMF package. So now that we've finished rendering out our project, I'd like to open that CPL that we just created. So here you can see on the timeline, we're actually working with the IMF package that we created. What I'm going to do now is work with some inserts. I'm going to drag these two folders into the bin. And what these two folders contain are green and red video inserts that I color corrected to clearly show how IMF supplemental packages work. So what I'd like to do is change the drag and drop mode so that clips are positioned on the timeline according to their source time code. This means when I select these two clips, I can position them on the timeline and they will automatically lock into the correct positions, in this case, above the original source material. So this is pretty cool. I'm actually playing back the uh, compressed MXF media which I opened in the IMF package, and you'll see the system seamlessly then jump to the, uh, the uncompressed DPX frames, and in fact it could play back any file at this point. So you can intermix uh, compressed, um, uncompressed files, ProRes, DNxHD, you name it, the timeline really is flexible and can just play back any source file in real time to whatever output resolution you have selected on the timeline. In this case, UHD RGB 444 10-bit. So now that I have my inserts in the correct place, let's go to the IMF delivery tool, and in this case, select Supplemental IMP. The wizard's gonna look slightly different now because a lot of the options have been grayed out. They were already defined in the original master package. So the only thing I need to do now is make changes to the uh, appropriate titling. And in this case, I've created a subfolder within the original IMP called green version. Now what's interesting now is when I hit the create button, what you're gonna see is, is the original content, as in the items of media which were not color corrected, have been left alone. And the Clipster now is only rendering the delta between the original package and the new content that's been placed on the timeline. So you can imagine, if you had a two and a half hour feature, you don't want to be re-rendering the entire sequence every time there's new media. You only need to render either the heads and tails, or in this case, just the inserts that you've placed onto the timeline. Just saving so much time in the workflow process. So now we've finished rendering that package, let's have a look at what we've got inside our folder. So if we go back inside our domestic final, what you'll see is here's the original IMP, and here's our subfolder containing, containing the new video assets. So to prove that they've been put in place, we go down and open the supplemental project, in this case going into the green version CPL, 
And what you'll see on the timeline, very, very clearly, you can see that here's our clips with the new insert. Now we also had some red inserts to work with. So I'm now faced with an interesting workflow choice. You can clearly see I have those green inserts on the timeline and I could replace those um, with red inserts in this supplemental package. The problem is then I'm gonna have a dependency, meaning when I wanna open up that red package in the future, I'm gonna need all the green inserts in place as well as the original domestic CPR. So a much better workflow in my mind is to go back and open the original CPL. And then this time, when we add the track, we can then go into our bin. And once all the media is in the correct position, we can then create our next supplemental IMP. And the beautiful part about this is, you can see I'm starting to build all the dependent versions inside the central IMP, which is containing the domestic master. When I hit create this time, the system's gonna go ahead and render the delta based on the original IMP package that we created. So it couldn't be more simple. We created our original IMP, then we created a green and a red supplemental version, all of which can be opened, played back, and created inside the cluster. I hope you've enjoyed this demo. If you have any questions, please just email support at dvsus.com and we'll be more than happy to help you. Thanks for watching.